um, that is live on Facebook, Zoom, and YouTube. So let's go ahead and give it to, um, to our message nation. Amen. <laughs> my tongue, my tongue was tied a little bit this morning, but welcome, welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and give you your morning announcement, the, um, the uh, message church news announcements. Amen. So we want to, like I said, to welcome every, um, you know, one here. And if you are a first time guest, new um, visitor, or even a e-church member, we want to say thank you for joining us and welcome to the message church. And most of all, for, um, for being here in this place, because there is a word for you in the house. Amen. 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 And if you are on um, um, social media, go ahead and put something in the chat so that way we will know that you are here because we do go back and we look at those comments and that you're praying for us or that if you need prayer, you know, just feel free to message us and we will um, go ahead and get back with you. Well, y'all, my name is Pastor Deborah. Amen. Pastor Deborah, I am your, um, your pastor here along with our bishop. And I'm so excited that you guys are here. And so here is some of your weekly announcements, okay? So we um, start every single Sunday at 10 a.m., amen, and we start off with intercessory prayer. Our prayer time is not just the, um, quote, intercessory team. We start off, that's a part of our service because we want you to come in and experience God's best, amen. So we want to make sure that you come in at 10 and get involved with our prayer. Also, we would um, like to uh, welcome, we um, you know, usually do a message moment, um, a uh, moment, our message member of the week, but we've started something new because so many people are starting to um, um, connect with us and they are becoming partners online, amen? And so we like to welcome, so this is our first time, we would like to um, um, welcome our message um, partner of the week, amen? And let's give it up for our message partner of the week, Miss um, um, Ada, um, um, Ada Ware McLemore, McLemore, amen, and she's following us on social media, and she is um, financially supporting us, and she's not even here, so we're going to start pulling some of our partners out and rec and. Um, recognize them every single week just as well as we've been doing members. Amen? Okay. So um, we also have an e-church member membership just in um, case if you live in another state, if you live too far to get to the um, um, message church, you can still be a part of the ministry by becoming an e-church member and you just go to our website there and you can join just as, and you can have the full-fledged benefits of any in-house member even if you are a e-church member. Amen? Well, you guys, our uh, message cafe is um, closed on today, so you won't get any healthy teas or healthy smoothies. I am looking for a new person to come in to help us out in that area. So if you would like to get busy in the church and you're just trying to figure out what, and I will train you, train you. It's not hard, um, but we need someone to come in and help us. You guys, we are growing, and we, and we need help in so many different areas. And so if you're just sitting back, you're just sitting back, and you're just trying to wait until like, okay, what do I need to do? Believe me, I got some work for you to do, amen? I will put you to work because we need to get busy doing God's work, amen? So I want you to make sure that you um, see me, amen? Also, all the women that uh, attended our um, Women's Empowerment Luncheon yesterday, it was amazing, amen. We had a great, great time. And I tell you that the women and the young ladies left, they were feeling, they were empowered to um, know that they have so much power in them. You know, because uh, in our theme was denim and diamonds, okay? I stole that from a good friend of mine that I, you know, spoke at her birthday party. I said, girl, I'm going to steal that theme because I loved it. And so we had our denim jeans on, and y'all know we had to have on our bling, amen? And so it was so, so good. And so that, um, that, that they... Um, because denim have been um, around a long time, right? And so as women, we are as valued as, as, um, as denim. We, are, we have longevity. And guess what, y'all? Um, now they got holes in jeans. 
but them holes in jeans are so much value now, amen? <laughs> Back in the day, we have a hole in our jeans. What, what did mama do? Cut them off and you wore them for shorts, amen? We wouldn't dare wear holy jeans, amen? But now people are paying money for it, so it's value. So women, y'all are valued just like that. And then we talked about the diamond, just as a diamond is rough and it's ugly and everything, but a diamond goes through the cutting process, it goes through the heating process, and then, it, then you would just shine just like that diamond that's how us when we have gone through the cutting amen y'all we have went through some heat of life but look at us now we are shining like a diamond amen so that's what we talked about on um yesterday and it was great and then the men of god amen how many men in the house did we have and on social media amen let me hear y'all say something hey 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 right <laughs> All right, okay, and men in the, uh, on the um, chat, go ahead and put that, yes, I'm a great man, amen, just go ahead and put that, I'm a great man, and then um, uh, Bishop is um, traveling down to Coolidge, which is my hometown, amen, he's uh, traveling down to Coolidge, and he will be with Bishop Vince Smith for their men's empowerment breakfast, so men, meet him here right at the church at 715, if, if you would like to um, carpool, Meet him here, and you guys are going to carpool down. If you would like a shirt, because they are getting shirts made, if you would like to get a shirt, please see um, Minister Clarice out, um, out at the front information table, and she can put your name down, and you guys can get your shirts ordered and be in, um, in um, just in um, fellowship with them on this coming Saturday. Amen? Leaving. Um, meet here at 7:15. Amen. Father's Day is also next Sunday, and we want to invite all fathers that we have a you know special service for you. We always do a um, parade, so you guys can come in, and we'll we will just walk you in. It's just going to be so so nice. Um, we also will have a continental breakfast for you, so come in. Um, come early, come about 9.30 on next Sunday, and let's, um, let us treat you men for a good continental breakfast. Um, and then we'll, we have our Father of the Year, as we um, do every single year. We honor my dad, uh, which is going to be with the Lord. So we raise money all during the year, and so we choose two mothers on Mother's Day, and then we choose one father on Father's Day, and it's in reference to Bishop and and my um, and my parents okay and so we give each father we give them a uh, five hundred dollars cash and we also give them a plaque and so you have until probably by monday or tuesday to get in a um, um essay so if you guys know of any father it does not have to be um, um, well, it does have to be local because they will have to come here on Sunday morning. So if you guys know of anyone, a father, even if you are a father and say, look, I want that $500, you go and tell your kid and say, you know what, y'all go and nominate me. That's how you do it. Amen. That's how you do it. You just have to have someone nominate you. Our team is going to look at it, and that's how we choose. Amen. So that's going to be somebody going to get $500 next uh, Sunday. Amen. We're going to honor you in the honor of my daddy, Samuel Craig Jr. Amen. Well, senior, senior. I guess he's senior. Yes. Yeah, they always called him junior, though. You know, that was so strange, but he was, he's always been a senior. But they called him Junior Craig. Okay, next, and then on the June the 24th, you guys, we are having a white table talk. Our white table talk is a platform that we come, we bring any, any topic to the white table, amen? And y'all, our white table um, topic is going to be the pain of not having a father. A pain of not having a father. And so y'all have to make sure you tune in. It's going to be on Facebook and um, Zoom, amen? on there. All of these announcements, you can go to our web, website and you can get them all again. Amen. How many married couples do we have? Amen. In the house, we have some, woo, y'all better not be silent, but say, woo, yeah, yeah, yes. Amen. But we are having a marriage retreat and that's coming up July the 21st through the 23rd. Y'all, it's for three days and two nights and you want to make sure that you sign up and the deadline for your room, for your good room rate is going to be um, June the 19th. So if you have not signed up yet, you need to sign up. Go ahead and put that um, 
deposit down and you can save your room so you can keep that uh, rate amen and so we even are going to have a wedding re uh, a wedding renewal of vows on that Friday night and it's it's, it's a renewal for a deeper commitment for where God is going to take your marriage amen so you want to make sure we have a couple's massage we have so many things going on for you amen all right, and lastly, you guys, I want you to, um, um, just to help us to keep our um, sanctuary clean, you were given a, um, a little package, which is just a, um, a um, sanitizer wipe, and just we just ask you to wipe down your seat so you can help us keep our sanctuary clean and healthy. Amen? And then lastly, as Bishop come up, so we have a special guest in the house. Amen. Woo! All right. We have none other but um, Apostle Alfred E. Craig Sr. Yes, amen. And Beverly Ann Craig. <laughs> Dr. Beverly Ann Craig. Amen, amen. So we are excited that they are in the house with us on this day. This is his first time coming to us. He has never even seen our church. Amen. Never seen it. And uh, matter of fact, he went to the wrong church this morning, okay? <laughs> Like, where is y'all at? Amen. But he's never been here, so we want to welcome him. Um, he is my natural brother, um, and, you know, um, I guess a natural brother. Um, but, you know, we never really seen him because I was with him for 38 years, 38 years. And, um, and I've never seen him as, um, like, as my brother, even though he's been my brother all this time. But I've seen him more as my pastor other than my brother. I know it's strange. It's strange. But, uh, but that's how, and I don't even call him by his nickname. I, I call him Dr. Craig, even though he's my brother. But um, we are very close. We're very, very close. And um, so I'm so glad that, um, you know, he's here and, and Dr. Bev is here. And we go back a long, long way, a long, long way. And um, I remember when we was all living in Coolidge and we were, we were, um, we, I lived next to our door because they had a house built right next to, to ours and I was still at home. And uh, me and Bev, we was, um, we were um, putting a mask on our face. And you know, and, and that time it was like, you know how that, like the green mask, you know, I mean, we were just masked up. And all you can see was our eyes. And uh, and we and and she was going she was going to walk me I mean just watch me go you know home because it was just right next door. We happened to turn around and look at each other. We cracked up because all that you can see was our teeth and our eyes. You know, it was so funny. But um, but you know my mom um, passed when I was very young, uh, nine. And so when they moved there, I didn't know how to cook like soul food. And so I used to watch her cook. So I picked up so much of my cooking skills from her. But I can't do that red velvet cake, though. She got that down. But, you know, just some things just in memory that I can, you know, think of when I was just um, growing up. And then just being, uh, you know, them helping to, you know, raise me and my little sister. Amen. Even though Bev is not that put much younger, I mean, older than me. You know, <laughs> but she helped raise me, okay? So I just, I just want to say thank y'all for coming, to, um, taking time out of y'all busy schedule to come and spend some time with us. Amen. Amen. All right, it's you. It's me. It's you. Well, good morning, everyone. Is our God good or what? Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. To those of you that are here in person, thank you for coming. To those of you that are on Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom, just know we're excited that you are a part of the service today. And we know God has something very special just for you. As uh, Pastor Deborah had just been mentioning about, uh, we have special guests this morning, but we're just excited about what God is doing in the body of Christ and here at the Message Church. We believe that the spirit of restoration has been released. Somebody say, it's time for my... Yeah, you didn't say it like you mean it. Say it again. Say it's time for my. Yeah, you got to take personal ownership of that because God wants to do something in your life. He wants to restore some things. He wants to expand some things, and you just got to get ready for it. Amen? Because I truly believe that we're in a great, great season. Watch this, to be saved. Watch this. Anybody that's watching that you ain't saved, get saved because this is the season that you need to be saved so you can live the life that God has ordained for you to live. So we don't. Amen. There's power in the house. 
But so we don't prolong the time and we, we give the man of God enough time to do what God has ordained for him to do today. We want to move into another special time of worship that we invite and encourage everyone to participate in. We understand that whenever we are a child of God, that there are principles that we operate by. Is that correct? You know, Bible, watch this, Bible promises are the result of executing Bible principles. You know, many times we want to experience the promises of God, but we've got to also be willing to put in the principles of God. We, if we don't do the principles, you're not going to get the promise. That didn't go over well, but amen. See, in life, there's always going to be reasons why you can't do things. But for every reason why you can't, there's another reason why you should. And you've got to go with the reason why you should do it instead of looking at the reason why the enemy tells you you can't do it. Because the enemy is always out to do one thing. Well, it's actually three things. Steal, kill, destroy. So he does not want you to prosper. He does not want you to walk in health. He does not want you to have victory. He wants to do everything he can possibly do to ensure your, watch this, failure. But Jesus said he came that we might have life and that we might have it what? More about me is a more abundant life but we've got to recognize if we always do what we've always done we'll continue to get what we've always got so if we want something different we got to be willing to do something different and if we say we trust God how many say they trust God well one of the watch this, can I say one of the main ways you can prove to God to the devil and everybody else that you really trust God is in this area of finances because it's really easy to say, oh, but then don't go in your pocket. <laughs> so if you want to prove to everybody that you really trust God and that God is your source, tithes and offerings is a way for you to prove that you really trust God. Because when you release your money, when you release that type, well, really the tithe belongs to God anyway, but I'm talking about when you, are, when you return it back to him and then you give of your offerings, your gifts of love, your sacrificial offerings, what you're telling everyone is I trust God because God is my source. And when you understand that God is your source, that's when you can claim the promise in the Bible in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, that your God shall supply for you all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You know, we, we're, we're very good at quoting scripture. But do you realize it's not the, quip, the scripture that you quote that you experience? It's the scripture that you walk out. You've got to do it. The Bible says it's the doer. Not just the hearer. Not just the person that says I'm blessed. But it's the doer of the word that is blessed in his deed. So as you bring your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love today, you are setting yourself up for the greatest financial windfall that you have ever experienced in life. I believe that finances are being restored right now. I believe that finances are being expanded right now. But you've got to be obedient to do what God's word says. That's all we're here to do. We're not here to make you do it. We're not here to twist your arm. We just want you to do what your Bible says. And your Bible says to bring your tithes and your offerings into the storehouse that there will be meat in his house and then God says prove me or put me to the test and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you have not not have room enough to receive and then he goes on to say this if that wasn't good enough he says I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake and he will no longer destroy the fruit of your ground Are you ready for that? Yeah, I'm talking to you, man. I'm talking to you with the Just, just Do It t-shirt on. So everybody take his statement that he's wearing boldly on his shirt. And now that we're in our tithes and offerings, this is the word of the Lord for you. Just do it. Don't think about it. Don't. You ain't got to go pray. You ain't got to go fast. Just 
do it. So as you participate in tithes and offerings today, we declare over your life that you are blessed, highly favored, and that you are abundantly supplied. If you need a tithing or an offering envelope and you're in person, if you'd raise your hand, the ushers are in the aisles now to provide you with one so that you can participate in tithes and offerings. If you're there on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, you can mail yours in to 2219 South 48th Street, Suite J, Tempe, Arizona, 85282. But there's a number of ways that you can utilize this morning as you participate and obey God in reference to your giving. One is our text give. That's 77977. You'll use your cellular device and all you would do is text that number and then you'll be prompted to do some things if it's your first time and you'll just type in the message give. The message give. Then you can go also to our website and that's www.tmsgc.church there you can also follow the giving link and there you can give as well I spoke to you previously about the offering envelope you say why'd you say the offering envelope first because that way if you want to fill out your million dollar envelope you have time to do it before we actually receive the tithes and offerings this morning amen and then the fourth way that we give is through our cash app. And that's dollar sign the message church. Whichever way you choose to give, just know we set ourselves in agreement with you for the greatest financial days of your life that you live the life that God has ordained for you to live and the one that Jesus paid the price for. And that is a life of victory and success. How many realize that God really does want you rich? Anybody understand that? God really does want you rich. Matter of fact, he wants you wealthy. Do we have any wealthy, wealthy, what is it called, wealthy place travelers in the house? I mean, that, that, that's where you live at, in your wealthy place. Everywhere you go, wealth, wealth, wealth. I hear that in my spirit. Wealth, wealth, wealth. Somebody need to receive it. Wealth, wealth, wealth. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So as we get ready to give this morning, those of you that are in person, would you go ahead and stand to your feet with us? Those of you on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, you can stand up while we're receiving our tithes and offerings as well. And we're going to get ready to give to our high priest who is Jesus Christ. He's going to worship the Father there with our tithes and offerings, but we're not going to miss out on the opportunity to worship God right here on the earth. So what I need you to do now is if you have a tithing or an offering envelope, raise it high. Use it as an instrument of worship. If you have an apparatus, that you are making your transaction with your cell phone your ipad you can raise that up right now in the name of jesus father we set ourselves in agreement with these men and women of god these tithers and givers and father as they give today we set ourselves in agreement with them that right now the devourer is rebuked off of their finances that right now the windows of heaven are opened unto them and you are pouring them out a blessing that they have not room enough to receive father we thank you that all nations are calling them blessed because they are a delightsome land saith the Lord and if the Lord says it we accept it we receive it therefore it happens in our lives right now in Jesus name come on somebody say amen and amen on the count of three give the Lord the biggest shout of praise you can one two three hallelujah God, if you're pushing the button, push the button. If you're bringing your tithes, your offerings, your gifts of love, you can come forward and give. If you're on this side, y'all know what to do. Come along the wall. If you're on my right side, you're going to go to the back and around so you can give today as well. Father, we thank you for these precious men and women of God, these men and women who trust you, men and women that are sold out, men and women that believe the promises of God. Therefore, they execute the principles of God and they experience wealth and riches in their house, in their businesses, in their ministries, in everything that they do. God, we thank you and we praise you. We glorify your name. We honor you for doing it in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands towards your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts of love. Precious Father, we thank you. We praise you for the privilege and opportunity of giving. As we do so today in obedience to your word, we believe now that the, uh, that the promise of God has been released upon our lives. God, we thank you that there are no unmet needs. Matter of fact, every earthly need that exists is today swallowed up by the kingdom supply that is available to us. God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you for financial victory now. In Jesus' name, come on somebody, say amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe that wealth and riches has hit your house. Do you believe it? 
Amen, amen. You go home today and expect. You might need to go ahead and check your mailbox. I know mail don't run on Sunday, but you might want to check it anyway. You never know what done slipped up in there by, since while you was at church. I'm telling you, things can happen. There is nothing too hard for our God. Amen. So we're excited today about um, Dr. Alfred, Apostle Alfred, and Dr. Beverly Craig, or Ambassador Beverly Craig, being in the house this morning. We're excited about the things that uh, that God has has done and is doing uh, in our in our relationship, uh, because God God is a can I say this a restoring God. He is a restoring God, and all we have to do is be open to what He wants to do in our lives. So I would encourage you that if there are some things that God is unctioning you to do. Uh, as it pertains to restoration, as it pertains to uh, reconnecting with certain people or with certain things, I would encourage you to go ahead and listen to God and not how you feel about it. Because feelings sometimes will f convince you to go against what God is saying. Anybody ever been there? Y'all don't know nothing I'm saying right now. So you've got to be willing. I've got to be willing to heed the voice of God. And when you heed the voice of God, what happens is the plan of God will then become a reality. Is that all right with everybody? So this morning, as we get ready for our special guest to come and to share with us this morning, I'm excited about it. Number one, I get to sit down. Glory to God. That's a glory. That's a wonderful thing. Amen. David, this, this is what this is. I, what, 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 this, we've been going now for what, about seven years? So this, this be one about the first Sunday. I got to just sit down. And just listen to the word of God. It's going to be a good time today. Amen. But I believe that there is a word in the house. I believe that God is, uh, has brought this man and woman of God, um, can I say, back into our lives uh, for such a time as this. Not that they ever left, but I'm just saying to the degree that God is allowing us to, uh, to have fellowship now. Uh, as as we, I think myself and uh, Apostle Craig had talked about it, we, we, we never have had a, a brother-in-law relationship. Uh, you know, it was always that ministry. Everything was around ministry. And I, and, and I understand that, you know, because that's the assignment that God had given me. But the, the, the brother-in-law relationship uh, has been sweet. Got, got a chance to, you know, sleep, sleep at their house. You know, they, they've been over to the house, you know. Now, I still don't call him by his name. He's still Dr. Craig, still Dr. Bell. You know, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't crazy. I ain't went that far with it. You know, that, no, that, ain't, that, ain't, that wouldn't be the Lord. Amen. That, because we respect them at, at that level. To us, even though we're brother-in-law and sister-in-law, that's, that's not the level of respect that we carry for them. So even when we go to family functions... We, we still don't call them by their first name. It's still doctor. That's, that's always. So I am just honored that they would uh, take the time. You know, just came back from, uh, from Africa a few weeks ago. Um, you know, just traveling and doing what God has told them to do as the apostles to the nation. Uh, and they have saw, saw fit to let God lead them to this, this huge, growing, mega church called the message church uh over here on 2219 south 48th street and i'm just honored that they would come and to share with us today so uh message church message nation uh help me in welcoming to the uh to the platform i guess you can say um that to take over the rest of the service and do what god has told them to do would you help me honor this man and woman of god i'm I, I, we don't normally do but i'm gonna ask you stand up i'm gonna ask y'all to stand up that's that's the honor I, i'm just saying we got to honor they say give honor to whom honor is due they don't ask for it but i'm just saying that's the level of honor that they are due uh for who god has called them to be to the body of christ so would you help me a message church message nation in welcoming Apostle Alfred and Ambassador Beverly Craig to the stage. Come on, come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're first giving honor to our bishop, Bishop Rick Garrett, and First Lady Deborah. Where, there she is back there. She's always so busy. <laughs> 
Amen. But one of these days, she's going to get a chance to be be, uh, sit beside her husband one of these days. Praise God. But if I know her, she's always going to be busy doing something. But I praise and thank God for that. Well, I'm glad to be here one more time at the Message Church. Praise God, where Jesus is always going to be Lord. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, Jesus is going to be Lord of the Message Church. Well, we praise and thank God that you're here uh, on this morning. And um, in Psalms, oh, I know it by heart, y'all, but still, I'd like to go to the Word of God and, and read it from the Word of God, amen? Because our, the Word of God should never escape our eyes. You know, we got these electronic things, and some of, some of us don't even go to the Bible no more. But for some reason, I miss my Bible. I mean, I just love hearing those, those that the, 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 the yeah, the pages just, just, I mean, it's just something about that, that, that wood, amen, <laughs> praise God, but I just praise and thank God, amen, for the electronics, because sometimes these electronics, they'll go out on you, you don't know where you're at, it's like, but I just praise God, but in Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit, sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doeth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. And, the, and verse 8, it says, for the, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall prosper perish amen so if you know that god knows that the things that you are doing right don't worry about the, the other people amen. man because they're gonna lie on you they're gonna cheat on you but the way the lord knows your way amen because you are a righteous person so don't you know you know people talk about me they talk about my nails they talk about my hair but that's all right i love it and when you know who women, especially women of God, when you know who you are, you know what you deserve. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I know I'm a blonde. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But when you know who you are, you know what you deserve. Amen. So when you start walking into what, you, what God has called you to do, it doesn't matter what nobody else says. Amen. You know, we got a lot of men that don't like women in wigs. Well, that's your problem, not mine. You know, when I first met uh, Apostle Craig, he didn't like me wearing wigs. But you know what? Hey, I came into my own. <laughs> I came, I just kept on wearing them and kept on wearing them and kept on wearing them until he got adjusted. I, I, wore, I, even, I don't even want them to bed. You're going to get used to this. <laughs> You're going to get used to this. Praise God. And now when he see me without one on, he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> you need to put that thing back on. <laughs> but I praise and thank God when you come into you all, you know, amen. And then also, too, you know, like when we first got together, you know, uh, my, my parents, they named me Beverly Malone. I was a Malone. Then after, and, and Apostle Craig, he came along, and I took on his name. Craig, and now that when you, just like I'm saying, when you know who you are in Christ, God will change your name. You know, they call me ambassadors, they call me Dr. Bev, and, 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 and whatever else, a Sister Craig, or First Lady, or Leading Lady, but God changed my name. So when God changed your name, you, you begin to take on what he, what he is. Amen. So when God changed my name, he said, your name is going to be Vroti. Vroti. V-R-O-T-I-G. Vrotig, V-R-O-T-I-G, the visible representation of the invisible God. That's who y'all looking at today. That's who you are looking at today. So when you know who you are, ladies, amen, go ahead and walk in your rightful authority, amen. I mean, the name that God has given you, when God, gets, when God gives you a name and you get the revelation of that name, can't nothing touch you. I said, can't nothing touch you. It might try to come against you, but hey, God would always rise in your life. Praise God. But I praise and thank you all for uh, uh, being here at the Message Church. Thanks for receiving us. Amen. And I just praise and thank God. Amen. That he is going to carry you through whatever you need to go through because you have perfect, perfect.
perfect examples that's leading you into the ways that you should go. Amen. Amen. And never, never, ever uh, uh, think that your pastor and, and wife is against you, but they're just trying to help you to the next level. Amen. Right. They're here to encourage you, to give you the word of God like you're supposed to have it because they've been taught by the best. Yeah. <laughs> They have been taught by the best, praise God. And I just present that. And for those of you that have that uh, entrepreneurial spirit about you, well, step into that. Amen. The body of Christ needs the gift that you have. The body of Christ needs more money. Yeah. I said the body of Christ needs more money. So that entrepreneurial spirit is in the message church. Yeah. So step into it, people. Don't be, I mean, I mean they're giving all kind of money away. Y'all need to find out where's, what, what, uh, how to get that money. Right. You need to find out and bring that money to the body of Christ because God is getting ready to do something. And just like I said, the devil is trying to keep everybody away from the church because he knows the church is on the rise. This time around, you know, you know, he sent COVID and, and took us all out. Tr well, tried to. Tried to take us all out. Amen. And now he don't have, he don't, he don't want nobody coming back to the church. But the devil is alive. God's going to have the last word. I say God is going to have the last word. Praise God. Well, I love you. God bless you. And here's our apostle, Apostle Alfred Craig Sr. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. We are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise Amen. God. The Lord is good, isn't it? Amen. Praise God. Well, I, I'm excited about being here uh, today. Praise God to be in your presence. First, I want to give honor to Bishop Rick and Deborah. Give a lot of hand for your pastors. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, they've been with me for a lot of years. Deborah was my first Sunday school teacher. And when I got saved, you know, I started a little church, and it was just me and my wife and my, and my son, and, uh, and it was like four of us, I think it was, and so I said, I need a Sunday school teacher, so I went and found Deborah, got her saved and things like that, and she began my Sunday school teacher, and, I, and she had got rid of, uh, out of Sunday school class since. Right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And she just, you know, been uh, on fire for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And again, Bishop Rick, Praise God, also started off singing in my, in my, in my uh, singing group. <laughs> He used to travel with me and singing, praise God, in my singing group. And then eventually him and Deborah got married and, and uh, you know, began to be uh, in ministry for me for a lot of years, praise God. And it just excited, like, you know, like uh, even though my brother, my, she's my sister and brother-in-law, but it's a great thing how God establishes you also in your purpose. Yeah. Amen. And then men, uh, Yolenta Scorchy, uh, Yolenta, <laughs> amen, all of the above. Uh, we've been together for so many years. You know, we was actually hairdressers together. And uh, back, uh, I think in 1972, was it? About 1972, praise God, we started together. And then, and then became good friends after that. And uh, so uh, she's one that, I don't care where I go, she said, you know, she, you know, she the only one could talk to me any kind of way and get away with it. <laughs> Amen. But we, we were like brothers and sisters all those years, and so it's been a great blessing seeing her also, and then these are all of you that are here, praise God, God bless you all, just excited about being in the things of God, amen, amen. and uh, as, as I said, I, got, I went to the wrong church uh, when I got here, because you know, I did my first time being here, but I happened to see some people that, I said, I know them, I said, it must be Pastor Rick's church, because it's people I knew that was, you know, on the outside, but uh, uh, they wasn't, there was just someone else, amen, but I, but I learned that there's, you know, we have a ministry training institute, and literally, we've trained over 2,000 people just here in the Phoenix area. And so, uh, uh, and I found out three, uh, all three of the people here were my MTI graduates, all, all the churches here. Amen. Praise God. And so, and, uh, but uh, Bishop Rick and Deborah, I call them my master disciples. Amen. Amen. They, they're, they're the best. Praise God. And they, even though sometimes we would, when I bring Dr. Healy to Dr. Price, and we would go to the Phoenicians sometime to take them over there. Sometimes Bishop Rick, even though he's passing the church, would be, they'd be on the outside when us come out, even though he's passing the church, uh, when us come out to make sure we was taking care of on our way out. Right. And then sometimes Bishop Rick on his way to uh, come to church, to pastor the church that Sunday morning, would come to my house over in Gilbert, wasn't it? Gilbert wiped my car down and, and, and make sure I got to church, and then he'd come back and, and preach. So he's always had a servant heart. And the bishop never went to his head because it was in his heart. Amen. And so, again, we've always thanked God for him and, and Deborah and then this whole church. God bless all of you that are, that are here today. Just excited about being here. Amen. amen. And, uh, uh, and we're talking about everybody said restoration. restoration. Say it again. Say restoration. restoration. 
Restoration, Restoration is, in the house. is in the house. Amen. I, I, I was driving, I was driving uh, uh, last year, the year before last, one thing God, God said, I'm getting ready to restore everything in your life. And, uh, and, and just to see how God is doing that. Maybe as I teach today, I'll give you a chance to share some of the testimony of what God has been doing. And uh, we, we just got back from Africa, just with Nigeria a couple, two or three weeks ago. And the God doing great things. We've got MTI students over there that's believing God for one million members in their church. Mm -hmm. Amen. They got, they're, they're, they're up to about 40,000 right now. Yeah. Amen. And uh, so uh, tr growth is in, is, is in, is, is in the house. Yes, I said growth is in the house. Yes, Glory to God. You, you received that today? Yeah. Growth is in the house. So I want to pray. But well, Bishop, I want you to come up. I want you to pray with me as you come up today. Amen. And, uh, uh, and I want you to pray uh, as we agree together for restoration that is not coming to the house, but it's in the house. I said not coming to the house, but restoration that is in the house. Amen. Myself and Deborah was talking and and she, and she wrote that down as we were talking. She said, I wrote around if you just said it. And I'll tell her, I said, you know, we're talking about a theme. I said, you know, because I said, there's going to be restoration in the house. And Deborah said, I got it. <laughs> so she put all that down there, praise God. But I want you to pray. We're going to believe God for some things uh, in your life, praise God. And I'll make my microphone to pick you up there, Bishop. Amen. Go ahead and pray. Oh, I'm praying. Yeah, you're okay. praying. I'll, 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 go, I'll go agree with you. I, 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 I like your prayers. Father, we honor you and we praise you this morning, how we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that you afforded us to come together. And Father, thank you for restoration in the house. Yes. Father, I thank you that this spirit of restoration is not just something that we will see in the physical. Yes. But God, it all begins in the spirit realm. Yes. You're restoring things in the spirit realm that will manifest yes. in the physical realm. So, Father, we thank you that in this place today there is restoration of finances, restoration yes. of relationships. Yes. There is restoration in every arena of our lives because, God, that is your plan for us. Mm -hmm. That as you did huh, so long ago uh, through Jesus, who is your son, he paid the price yes. so that we could live the life at the level of his sacrifice. So God, we thank you right now that you are right now healing mm -hmm. hurts, yes. wounds yes. that have existed from separation, from uh, divorces, from things that have occurred that was the enemy's desire to steal, kill, and to destroy. But God, you are bringing things, you are breathing life yeah. back into situations that the devil meant for bad. You have turned those things around for good. And God, we thank you and we praise you for doing it that as the word of God goes forth today, that there will be a word in this house that will not only be in the church, but it will go throughout the airwaves to Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom. Everyone under the sound of Apostle Craig's voice today will hear the voice of God as it pertains to restoration and it will hit their house, hit their marriage, hit their homes, hit their businesses. Today, restoration takes place and we honor you for it. But not only restoration, but as we believe for this year that this is the year of restoration and expansion. Yes, yes. Hmm. Yes. That God, according to your word in Job 42, it said when Job prayed for his friends, mm -hmm. it said you restored everything unto him yes but yes. then you gave him twice as much yes jesus yes as he had before god yes. we claim that right now that yes. not only are things restored but god i speak twice as much yes jesus in the lives of everyone under the sound of our voice god we thank you we praise you and we honor you for doing it now in jesus name amen and amen amen glory to god come and give god some praise for that amen praise the lord hallelujah y'all receive that so I receive. I receive. And see, receiving means you ain't got to go get it. It's already in the house. So I receive. My restoration has come. And it's in the house right now. Our first scripture today is in the book of Joel, chapter number 2 and verse number 24. And uh, we just read that for a moment. It says, and I will... I mean, when God talks about something, it means it's, re it's done. Yes. He says, and I will restore yes, unto you the years. We're not talking about, you know, just something that last year, but he said the whole, the years yes. 
that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, the devil, the demons, and your haters. You got that? You get, you get it? All right, I, I, I said it again. I said it again. I said it again. God said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten that it thought can't come back. He get ready to throw some stuff up. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the pump worm, the devil, the demons, and your haters. Those that left you and thought you was, going, you was going, not going to come back. But say the devil is a liar. Because this is my year for the great comeback. All right, that's, yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. My great homage which I sent him on you, meaning this, the, the Lord just kind of backed his hand and the devil took over some things. He said, from this day forward, the verse 26, he says, and you from this day forward shall eat in plenty. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, more, no more having to borrow from uh, uh, payday loans. You're going to eat in plenty. And you're going to be satisfied. And you're going to praise the name of the Lord your God that have dealt wondrously. So what is wondrously? It's going to be so to the point that I wonder how that happened. He dealt wondrously. And my people from this day forward shall never be ashamed again. God said this is what's going to happen in your life. And that is in the house right now. You know, you know more is caught than taught. So as I'm teaching, there's, a, there's an anointing that is here already that you can catch. And all of a sudden, things will start, like Bishop Rick said, by the time you get home, things done, something done already changed. Because it's, it's, it's in the house. Everybody said, because it's in the house. So let, let me give you my definition of what restoration means. Restoration, you know, I'll just look it up. It means everything is replaced. And any, anything that, that someone borrowed and give it back to it means it's repaid back again. And as Bicker Rich said, it's not going to come back. It's got to come back double. Yes, sir. Yes. It means recompense. That what you lost, including your money, your health, and your relationships. It means full restoration. It means everything that was shut down is opened up again. Everything you lost, including your position, your purpose, your provision, and your power is restored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Restoration means that the years of loss that you've suffered, God is not going to hold anything back. He is here right now to make full restoration. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody ready for that? Come on, say, Lord, Lord I, receive I receive full, full restoration, restoration right now, right now. Today. today. It's not coming. It's not coming. It, is it is here. And I receive it. You know, a lot of times people are trying to, you know, uh, say they can't get restoration. I see a lot of times churches are trying to, you know, uh, grow, but they're just trying to get folks from other churches. And that's called trying to get a piece of the pie. But you recognize God don't need you to get a piece of pie. You got your own pie. You don't, you don't need nobody else's piece. You got your own pie. Hallelujah. You think about this. You know, sometimes you got, you know, uh, this is just a little size excursion. You got a lot of churches that's trying to manipulate people, other churches, stuff like that. And I, I, I thought about that. So, you know what? I said, the, the, you may have maybe three or 4,000 folks that's up on all these different churches, that little bitty churches, the bum bum bum. But God said the pie is, in, in the metropolitan Phoenix, the pie for 2022 in this metropolitan is 4,652,000. That's your pie. So don't let, don't let a couple of members that don't want to come back to church make you think that your church ain't going to grow. You know, they back at the nightclubs. Yeah, they, <laughs> the, the, they back at the casinos. 
you know, we live in Las Vegas, and so we would, you know, we go to uh, sometimes. You know, I'm not a gambler. We go to they have good buffets and and, 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 those, and those casinos. So we was, when we was gonna go to this one casino there a few weeks ago. You know, go to the buffet, and we got in there. It was so packed in there that I went back out to the car and got my mask. Uh, this has got to be full of COVID in this place. It was so packed. And the world has got back. Church folks who got the power over devils is the only one still scared. Everybody said restoration. But restoration, sometimes you would like for some of the old members to come back, but hey, if they don't want to come back, four million. 652,000 is your pie. Yes. Amen. Good word. How, that's just in this area. You know, we was in, we was in Nigeria, again, you know, some of my students that are there. And um, so we was coming from the airport, we was in Abuja, uh, Nigeria. And so on the way back, on the way to our hotel there, uh, we passed by this church. And, and the church looked kind of like the Cardinal Stadium, but it was larger than the stadium. The church seated 100,000 people. Come on, y'all. I said, the church, the church, they, they, did, they, they did more than one service because one service could hold everybody. As another pastor there in, 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 in Lagos, he's building one for 120,000 Already has two hundred million dollars in the bank to pay it in cash. I'm telling you what God is doing. So you, you, you can be so we can be so caught up on getting a little piece of the pie, but God, God, He said the Jesus said the harvest is ripe and ready. All we need is a few laborers, cause the harvest is great. Somebody say Amen. I declare, I declare, because, you know, at one time this church was at 300 people, but I declare that's just the beginning. That's just the, that's just the seed. I said, that's just the seed. Somebody say amen. amen. I declare immediate restoration. Huh? Can, can you receive that? So let me look at some points about how God's going to do this. Number one. You know, when, when, I remember when I first started over in West Phoenix over there, 51st Avenue and Thomas, people ask me all the time, they says, they said, Dr. Craig, when you went there, did you have to do a lot of fasting and prayer? And I believe in nothing wrong with fasting and prayer. It's because, you, cause, you know, we, we, on the news they said that 51st Avenue and Thomas was one of the most drug-infested, gang-related places in, in the Phoenix. He said, what did I do to get that thing broke over there? I said, I just showed up. Amen. The canker worm... Left when I showed up. The palmer words had to go when I showed up. No, no more fasting, right? No more fasting and praying. But I would never fast for the devil to get out. He's already out. When I show up, he got to get out right then. Right, all right, all right. What would a God? Huh? One of the first things to do in restoration is you got to restore your dominion. It's the first thing you know. You, you, when you show up, a person of dominion has arrived. Jesus, I know. Peter, I know. Apostle Craig, I know. Dr. Beverly, I know. But then Bishop Rick, I know. And then Everybody said dominion. dominion. So, so when God got ready to make us, we got to go back to the beginning and, and look not at our history, but at the purpose of which God created us. Genesis 1, 26, when God thought about making us, he said this, let us, God said, let us make man, what? In our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion. Not, not, not go fasting and praying to get a devil out. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, 
and over, over all the earth. Is, 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 uh, is Phoenix included in the earth? Yes, it is. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And verse 28, and God what? Blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moved upon the earth. Say, God is talking to me right there. The word blessed, God said, God blessed them. The, the original Hebrew is connected to verse 1. It says, and God in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The original Hebrew said, in the beginning, the blessed one. The blessed one created the heavens and the earth. So, when God, so in verse 28, when it says, and God blessed them, it was saying the blessed one blessed them with his blessing. I mean, he put on them everything that was in him. Because they cannot be in his image, the blessed one, without being blessed. Yes. And the word blessed means to be empowered to prosper at the highest level. Yes. 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 All right, come on, y'all follow me now. Yes. We, take, we take you to restoration. Yes. Yes, sir. I said the blessed one yes. blessed yes. us. Yes. Huh? Yes. And then he said, now, because I put a blessing on you, you can now be fruitful. Yes. And the word fruitful means, be fruitful means you are now a producer. It means you are now a creator. It means you're now able to bring forth something that is not seen. It means you're able to expose to the public that which has never been designed, seen before. You are designed now, just like God, to bring forth something that has never been before. And as you are fruitful, you're going to produce something like an entrepreneur. You know, like there was there was no such thing as uh, as Apple, but someone produced it. Yeah. That's called fruit. Yes. There was no such thing as a car. Okay. Everybody was riding horses, but someone produced fruit. Yeah. There was no such thing as an airplane, yeah. but someone produced fruit. Because the fruit means that God puts something in you that's that's that that it, nobody else has ever done before. Because the blessing is on you, and you have the ability now to be fruitful. That means you are a Holy Ghost entrepreneur. Hallelujah! All right, that's right. So I am a creator, just like God. I'm blessed, I'm designed. Like God, like God to bring forth, to bring forth something, that something that has never been from this day forward, this day forward I am a Holy Ghost, a Holy Ghost entrepreneur. entrepreneur I am a producer, am a producer. In, Jesus name. in Jesus name amen glory to God be fruitful then he says multiply oh my God he didn't stop right there did he and the word multiply means to increase what you got It means to build inventory. It means to increase this function. What does that mean? I, I started off with an Apple One. I mean, a, a iPhone One. Then it went to Apple Two. Then went to Apple Four. Apple Six. That means you keep on increasing this function. That means that in the church, we we'll continue to make things better. You start off in this church, but you got to multiply to go to a larger church. Then go to a larger church. So you build your own dome. You, see, you have your own business. See, back 20 years ago, when I was going to Africa at first, you know, we, we were going paying for everything, you know, because they, they were looking for the missionaries to come. But, they, but by Americans were shouting, they were getting a hold of that thing. Yes, yes. They, instead of that, see, instead of having, we were having church, they were like being in the church. Yes. It's all right, it's all right. <laughs> Everybody, but it's, it's time for restoration. It's time for restoration. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, I mean, when I first started going years ago, we, we, we taught MTI. Same thing I taught here. But uh, they caught hold of that thing and started growing with that thing. And this time, we went this last time, they flew us over there first class. They, they put us in the Hilton Hotel, not some of the rundown hotel. Our first time in Africa, 
They, 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 we was in this one hotel, and uh, the water cut off as you was going. <laughs> Taking the showers, and they said when you, when you gotta eat in a restaurant, don't don't go to the kitchen because you know what's in there. <laughs> when back this time, this is not Dr. Craig. You are our covenant father. So therefore, we gotta treat you at that level. So they flew us to first class. Put us in the Hilton Hotel that's bigger than, um, their Hilton is kind of like the Phoenician here. They put us in, and then they, 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 they put us in, they kept us in five star restaurants the whole time we were there, make sure we ate properly. And then they, then they, 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 they had us four tailor, me and Bev, four tailor made outfits. Okay, so we don't want you to go bicycle. You may, because they said the, the, the material, this is in Nigeria, the material your way shows your, your, uh, you know, your wealth. It shows your, your status. They said, because we went to Kenya one time, I bought it, and we thought, we thought because we had put a little side of Africa on that. We was, they said, no, Dr. Craig, that is, don't you wear that. <laughs> they said, poor folks wear that. They said, we tailor make your thing. So they, they, they take them, tell me stuff us from now. These are my MTI students. Amen. And then they gave us $10,000 on the way out. Those, those are my MTI students that we trained here. That's right. And then they went back over there. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Don't forget they made me some hair, too. And also made Bill some hair. <laughs> <laughs> they they, they, they tailor made some blonde hair some, with some braids. Yes. God, even make you some hair. Yes. What am I saying? What am I saying? That God, the same word God spoke to each of you. I'm saying that same word God spoke to you. Because God is of no respecter of persons. Number one, everybody say, I'm fruitful. So I multiply. I continually improve. And then he says to replenish. That means to stock with abundance. Mm. I declare this church is stocked with abundance. I declare every member is stocked with abundance. I declare your checking account, your, your savings account is stocked with abundance. I declare, ladies, your closet is stuck with abundance. I declare your gas tank is stuck with abundance. <laughs> Glory to God. I was got some gas the other day. It was, a, it was a, a, a $6 a gallon. But I said, no problem going to do this pumping on out. Because I remember back in the day, some of y'all remember this, when the gas was only 29 cents. Y'all remember, y'all remember, some of y'all remember that? And did, did, we, did we stop going and getting gas? No. I mean, they say, I ain't, ain't going to pay no dollar a gallon for no gas. People wish for a dollar now. <laughs> but you have the ability to replenish. Because that's the anointing that's on you. You're blessed. So don't never complain about the gas. Just say, God, I receive it in Jesus' name. Now, if you want to let your car, nothing wrong getting let your car. But don't never start complaining with the world. Only the world is dealing with that. Because the world and don't know how to be really fruitful. That anointing, the blessing is not on the world, so they got to be content. They, they hope the right president gets elected. But for you, God, the, the, the hand of the king is in God's hand. God can turn, God can change everything for you. Because the blessing, fruitfulness is on you. You're going to multiply and spite the economy. Be fruitful, multiply. Then he says what? Re and then he replenish. Then he says subdue. Yes. What the word subdue means to control the market. Control the market. You come up with a product that's just, that ain't nobody, you know, McDonald's got a product, even though I can hamburgers, but they've been controlling the market. Everywhere you go, there's a McDonald's. They're controlling the market on the Big Mac. You're the product God put in you for a business. God, it may have something similar to you, but at least McDonald's got their own pie. They're not trying to make a Whataburger in there. So you may have people that's got similar idea that you got, but, but ain't nobody got one like you because you're unique. Hallelujah. And God wants you to subdue whatever the, the God put in your heart, whether you're in ministry or whether you're in business. You, you are a fruitful person, and, and the blessing of God is on your life. 
He says, subdue, then he said, have dominion. And the word dominion means the power of governing and the power to direct and to control, to use or dispose at your pleasure. At your pleasure. At your pleasure. That means you got the dominion. Now, we're under the Lord Jesus Christ. But, when, but he has delegated to us that whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. You know, when you go out there, you go out there with full power and authority as one that's in total dominion, authorized by Almighty God. Have dominion. So when God said, I'm going to make an Adam in my, in my image, it means I'm going to make you an exact duplicate of me. I'm going to rule heaven. I want you to rule the earth. Come on, y'all. I was like, I'm going to rule heaven. I want you to rule the earth. So walk like that. Come on, walk like that. You don't, you ain't no little bit, of, you ain't no, 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 no church member. You are the church. Glory to God. You're looking for a handout. You, you better give a hand up. You're the head, not the tail. You're above, not beneath. You are the limb, See, you got the bl Everybody said the bl <laughs> Come on, get it, get it, get it, y'all. Like, God, y'all, y'all. Got, got it, you got it. You got it, you got it. Yes, hallelujah. You got to know who you are. You are in the image of God. You are like him. Hallelujah. We're talking about everybody said restoration. See, these are, you gotta know this to have to be able to really walk in full restoration. Genesis 2 7 makes this statement. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God forms the man out of the dust of the ground and he became and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life <clears throat> and man became a living soul now we think about breathing you're not talking about that it means when God breathed mean God put himself in him and the Hebrew says and man became a speaking spirit like God he became a speaking spirit like God. Mm. Can you see that? So then once God did, then God gave man an assignment. Genesis 2 verse 15 says this, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden to dress and to keep him. I mean, I'm putting you, a person in my image and my likeness, who is now a speaking spirit just like me, someone walking in dominion over all the earth, I want you to go into this garden and rule the garden, replenish the garden, be fruitful in that garden, control the garden on my behalf in my stead. Mm. And in verse 19, Adam starts doing that. Verse 19, he said, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every man the beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to who? Brought up to who? Adam. Adam. To see what he would call them. Because he is now a speaking spirit. Yes. That whatever he says comes to pass now. So it says that whatever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Because God now created them, but Adam gave them the names. And Adam and God is working together in this situation. Yes. Adam is now a speaking spirit like God. And whatever Adam said, dog. Dog. Oh, yeah, okay, so this one, I'm, I'm dog. Horse, oh, I'm a dog. Because now the person who is in an authority over all of it is speaking just like God. And everything he's saying, God has called it to be because the man walks in that kind of authority. That's why you can get saved until you confess, I'm saved. Because you are a speaking spirit. And, and, and God is limited now to your words. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all want to slow down? No, 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 no. 
Amen. How are you going to release this in your house? On your job, in your business. We're going to do it just like God. Because you're in his image. You're in his likeness. Number one, everybody said the Holy Spirit. All right, now, Genesis 1, 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was not form and void. Uh, you know, COVID just happened. People lost their jobs, lost their businesses. Churches having a hard time. It's without form and void, dug from the face of the deep, everybody discouraged. But what happened? And the Spirit of God. <laughs> Glory to God. When all the chaos is going on, the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the water. Can I say right now, COVID is over. The Spirit of God is now moving again. He is moving again upon the face of your life, your business, your ministries. But he can't do nothing until you go to verse 3. And God say it. <laughs> Even though the Spirit of God is moving, and but, but God say it, because He's a speaking spirit. Huh? And there was light. The Hebrew says light be and light was. Because the moment you start speaking as someone in the image of God who was blessed. Fruitful, multiply with the blessing of your life, and you start speaking, it happens. That's what the Bible says that man is snared by the words of his mouth. Life and death in the power of your tongue, because you are a speaking spirit. So, number one, the whole, everybody said the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Number two is love. love. Mm. You got to get rid of all the hatred. hatred. Yeah. Folks oh. that did you wrong. Folks that gospel about you. All the anger. Notice 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 says, For the love of Christ constraineth us. In other words, you because I want to walk like God, talk like God, I want the Holy Spirit to have free course in my life that when I speak, I got to now walk in love. And let that love of God constrain me that when I want to cuss you out, you ain't worth me losing my anointing. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Now, y'all ain't been like it before. But there's some folks that I, you know, if, if, I, was still, if, if I wasn't wanting to walk in the love of the anointing, I still know some cuss words. Any of y'all know still some cuss words? Some of y'all have been using them later, but you know. <laughs> But because I want to walk with, I want to walk in this anointing. The devil will hit you with all kind of things. He'll send certain people across just to, just to cross you up, huh? He's but the part of the love of Christ what constrains me, that holds me back because you ain't worth my anointing. You may gossip on me, but you ain't worth me getting involved in that. You have been in that treatment, but you ain't worth me getting outside of my anointing to try to become free with you. I hope you like me, but just in case you don't like me, I got to move on. Because I, I want to walk in this dominion. I want to walk in this dominion. I want to walk in this time for restoration. I ain't got time for, to hold things against nobody. I want restoration in my life. The Bible said when Job, uh, what he said, forgave us, what he said, but he prayed for his friends. The Lord said, so Job said, I know, I know some of y'all didn't do me right. He said, but I'm, I'm praying for you now because I want the devil on my life. I'm going to say, no, see, some, some, it's tough sometimes when you're hurt. But you got to say, God, I got to walk on beyond that and say, Jesus, forgive because it's not worth the Holy Spirit. Now, you may, because see, what people, people, a lot of folks are confessing the word, but the Holy Spirit is not there because he can't, he can't get involved in a lot of stuff. So before God spoke, he says, first of all, the Holy Spirit was there. And, and, but he says here that the love of Christ has got to constrain me now. you got to put a constraining on you now. 
My wife and I, we've been married for going on 48 years. And she ain't perfect. And I'm not perfect. I'm always right and she's always right. You know why? Because we're different. So we've had to learn how to let the love of God constrain us over these certain years. Because you, you, you're both got strong personalities. You're both going to have your own way. Some of y'all don't y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. But, but the love of God got to what? Constrain us. Because the anointing is what's important. I want to walk in this restoration. So in the mind that I have the Holy Spirit, number two, I've got to walk in love. And this, whole, this, this, walk, this walk of love, it, uh, Paul says, the love of God constrains me. So number one is the Holy Spirit. Number two is a, is a love walk. Okay. You've got you to just, God, I'm gonna, if I'm going to be like God, God has power. God has faith. But he is love. Amen. So I'm walking the fullness of God. I've got to decide this love walk. Bishop Rick said earlier, it's not about our feelings anymore. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about letting the fullness of God work in our lives. Because it's time for restoration. So number one, the Holy Spirit. Number two is love. And number three is called the anointing. Hmm. Even though the Holy Spirit is in you and on you, but in order for the anointing to work, you got to stay in love. Colossians chapter 1, I believe it's verse 25, I believe it is. Yes, it says... Wherefore, I'm made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Verse 26, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Verse 27, to, to whom God, listen now, would make known what? The riches, the riches of the glory of this mystery and is among the Gentiles, which is who? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Now the word Christ is not Jesus' last name. But the word Christ actually means the anointed one and his anointing. So it's Christ in me. The anointing is in me. So Dr. Craig, what is the anointing? The anointing is an empowerment of the Spirit of God for supernatural accomplishments. Then again, the anointing, Christ in me, is an empower of the Spirit of God for supernatural accomplishments. It is the Holy Spirit at work in you, through you, producing heaven on earth and extraordinary results. Anybody ready for some extraordinary results in your life? The anointing has got, it's got to be prevalent. Hallelujah. Uh, we can see in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 13, it says, 1 Samuel 16 13, it says, And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. When the anointing is on your life, as long as that anointing is functioning, like yokes will be destroyed, burdens will be removed. No, no one from the against you can prosper. And any tongue that comes against you will, will be judged and condemned because the anointing, you made a decision. That I'm going to walk on this anointing, and I want from this day forward, as of today, from this day forward, I'm going, to, I'm going to depend on the Holy Spirit. I'm going to walk in love. And I'm going to make sure that Christ is in me. That Christ is in me. And he's in me, empowering me for supernatural accomplishments. Mm. You know, a few years ago, my wife and I, after being pastor for 45 years, the Holy Spirit said to me, you know, uh, uh, turn the church into my son's hands and and we moved to Las Vegas. I said, God, why are you moving me to Las Vegas? Ain't, ain't never Las Vegas, but, but casino, and casino machines and stuff like that. Why am I going to Las Vegas? God said, because now I need you to move into the office of the apostle. But, you know, I, I really understand what God was talking about. But you can get so busy with church and doing things that some, you don't know that the anointing is not functioning like you, function like you know it should be functioning. So God says, I was a hairdresser for 20 years. I was a hairdresser for 20 years. That's how, that's how me and Yolento met. And the Holy Spirit told me this is about almost 30 years ago. He said, I want you to leave the hair industry and go into full-time pastoring. I didn't want to do that. Because I said, I don't trade folks. It's broke. <laughs> yeah, it broke. Everybody, you know, they're selling chickens. They're having bakes. So I don't know. God, I don't want to do that. I'm a businessman. I got a successful business. And I got to go, you know. And God said, oh, no, no, don't look, don't look at that. He said, look, he says, 
Did I take care of you in business? Yes. Yes, you, yeah, you did, God. He said, now, if you'll go into full-time pastor for me, he said, I'll, I'll equal and even do more in ministry. So I, was, I, went into, so I, I, I obeyed God reluctantly. I was not being a cheerful giver. I was being obedient. I mean, obedience sometimes obedience sometime is not cheerful. But you know God is telling you to do it. Y'all talking about it's different, isn't it? You know God tell you to do it, but it's not, it's, you, you're obeying, but it's, like you said, it's not a feeling. It's called obedience. And, uh, and so, you know, thank God. You know, back in 1994, 93, 94, I, I moved into full-time ministry, and God blessed me beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, we went, I remember in the ministry, we went, we went from like 5,000, we, we was only at 50,000 dollars a year. That was the most we was making. And when, we, when I went to full-time ministry, in obedience to God, in five years' time, we went from five, 50000 to $5 million. I said, I can't cut that many hits. I said, here, Lord. <laughs> God knew more than I did. Yes, but sometimes when God talks to you, it looks like at first it's an, it's a, it's an unfair exchange. Yes. God, you asking me to, to let go of this? Yes. To do this? Right. Are you following me? Yes. But the, I, think, I think it's, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, not, my, it's not my notes. Though. I think it's... Uh, uh, Isaiah 1 19 says, if you be willing and obedient, yes. you'll eat the good of the land. Yes. Yes. Huh? And then Job 36 11 says, if they obey and serve him, yes. they'll spend their days in prosperity and years in pleasures. So that obedience and that serving God, you got to move into that place in your life. So now God, about, about five, four years ago, God said, now I want you to go to Las Vegas. And uh, God said, now I got to teach you about, about the ministry of the apostle. Apostle, Lord, but I'm comfortable. And everybody know me in Arizona. You know, I, you know, I can, you know, I know how to start churches. I, so maybe, okay, God, maybe you're going to have me go to Las Vegas and start a church. You know, God, I know how to start a church. I don't start a lot of churches. God said, no, you ain't going to start my church over here. I got to teach you because if, if I'm telling you to be an apostle, I got to teach you how to use your faith based on your obedience to me. Yes. So me and my wife, we went there. We, we you know, I, I moved out. I, I had a 7,000 square feet home. I moved, we went out there. We, we moved into an apartment. Looked like an unfair exchange. Uh, are you following me? Yeah. Look like a fair, fair exchange. Yeah. But then, you know, I get there, and I said, God started teaching me about the ministry of the apostle, and, the, and then my position in the body of Christ, how, how valuable it was, you know, that, you know, in those areas, you know, that the, the ministry of the apostle was really needed. Because yeah. it's a whole different level of ministry. And so I'm there, and go, okay, now what am I going to do? So at first, I said, I'm, Lord, I'm starting a church on my own. I, I, you know, I need some money. I'm, <laughs> I ain't used to being this broke, you know what I mean? Living in an apartment. So I tried to start a little church, and there's a, there's a boys club. But it was, like put, it was like taking a shower with the socks on. You just know you are the will of God. <laughs> you try to repeat the past miracle. You try to repeat what God did before. And God says, I'm going to do a new thing that your eyes have not seen. You are an entrepreneur now. You are fruitful now. And so, you know, studying the word of God, you're listening to the spirit of God. And so about a couple years ago, during COVID, God said, now it's time. To believe you for me for your house. Really? Hallelujah. Is this the right time? <laughs> to believe me for you? Yeah, God said, that's it. Because you, you, faith does not have a season. <laughs> if thou can believe, all things are possible. I said, okay, God, what, how are you going to do this? He said, okay, what I need you to do, I, I've always quoted I don't know if there's, you can go all the way down to Luke, talk, if you go, there's a few scriptures on down there, go down to Luke 638, and God gave me this scripture, and uh, how many know when God gives it, he'll give you a word, yes. and, and look what it said, Luke 38, give, and it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Now, all these years, I've been quoting that scripture. I was stopping right there. But God said, keep on reading. With, for with the same measure. For the same measure that you meet or measure it out. With that measure, it shall be measured to you again. So God said, for this house, you're going to need thousands. So I need you to up your measure. You know, remember the old folks in measures? Yeah. You know, they had a, the teaspoon, the tablespoon, the cup full. Those are called measures. Yeah. So what he's saying is if you've been measuring it out 
in teaspoons, God said, I got to use teaspoons to get back to you again. Right. Been measuring out in, in, a, uh, in, in, in tablespoons, I got to use that measure to get it back to you. Yes. If you measure it out in cupfuls, I got to use that measure. If you, but if you, hold, if you measure it out in gallons, I'm going to use that measure and get it back to you again. So God said, since you're gonna, you need thousands now, you got to start sowing in thousand dollar increments. See, that's, it's different. And so he says, you're going to need thousands. Because this giving is what causes the favor to get on your life. Hallelujah. It causes just the meaning of work. So I looked at one of my accounts, you know, and I had like nine hundred some dollars in there. I, I said, maybe I'll get this nine hundred dollars, God, and have to get this nine hundred dollars. And I, I said, I'll get the other. He said, No, 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 do that. It's the measure, like if you y'all baking the cake, you can't say if it asks for if it asks for a cup, you can't get a, put a half cup and say, okay, we, while it's cooking, I put the other in there. You are gonna do that? It requires a cup at the beginning. <laughs> and, and that right, dog? Is that right? But it, 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 it requires a cup. You can't say, well, it's about halfway cooked. Here you go. Here you go. No, it don't work that way. If it requires a cup full, that's the measure. So now I look at another account. I had, I had like a hundred some dollars in there, and it made out to a thousand dollars. And then I call my you know, the person that you know that that's, I'm under. Uh, uh, I said, you know, I said I need to sow a seed. We, we text back and forth, and I said because I, I I need to believe you for this house, and I need to sow this thousand dollar seed. And of course he agrees. Okay, I, I receive that. You know, I believe God because his house is only thirty thousand square feet. So I found somebody that that understand measure. <laughs> Come on, y'all. You, 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 you can't sow. You got somebody that, that, you know, that believe in God for, for $10. No, don't sow there. Right. That's, called, that's called benevolence. <laughs> that's called giving to the poor. And the Bible says, if you give to the poor, he'll repay you. And then you're going to get $10 back. He, I'm a, God's, I'll repay you. But, but if you want to, to get involved in this, this is when you got to give to someone that's, that's, that's good soil to sow in. Yes. Because it's the seed and the soil that causes the, the fruit to come. Yes. If you get the right seed and the right soil, the harvest takes care of itself. Yes. Yes. Huh? So I knew, I knew he was good soil. So, so, I, so I, 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 I sit that off. And immediately God said, now go to this one place. God told me where to go now. He's going to go down there and, and check on the house. And, and of course, since it was COVID, they said, you know, that means it's going to take about a year and a half for it to be built because, you know, all the wood is going to, you know, but that was to my advantage. The delay was not a denial, it was to my advantage. Because yeah. they said, well, this, they said, your credit score got to be at this point by then, by the time we close, and you got to have this much money by the time we close. Yeah. Right. Well, a year and a half, praise God, I got, got to give me time to get my faith yet, but, but, but the process began. Yeah. We, we, we picked out the house we wanted. We picked out the carpet we wanted, the kind of shelves and everything, and the process was started. They said, well, you got to come up with this my money, with the kind of money they had to come up with. And all of a sudden, you know, God showed me the idea how to do that because now the blessing is on me. Yes. And the creativity is coming on me. Yes. And the entrepreneurship is coming. That mindset of entrepreneurship is coming on me. And, and so I'm creating now. And God started showing me to create the money. And every, as the money was coming, was needed toward the down payment, it kept coming at the right time. Yes. But I'm sowing it because I'm needing thousands of dollars and I'm sowing in thousand dollar increments. Yes. And so last August, in Las Vegas, without a church, we moved into our brand new house. And we got there from this one scripture God gave me with the same measure that you put it out is what God going to use to get back to you again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so as we're talking about this, we'll go back up to now 1 Samuel to the 17, verse 14. That was way down my scripture today, but I, God wouldn't put that in there right then. Because some of y'all, that's where you are right now. You're on a project right now. All you need is to ask God, what's my measure? What you need me to do? Get this thing process started. Are y'all, do we got any entrepreneurs in this place? Holy Ghost entrepreneurs? That just ready to go to move, let God move you in the, in the way He wants you to go. Amen. Amen. Yeah. First Samuel 17. Everybody said the first next thing you got to have faith filled words. Amen. Everybody said faith filled words. Amen. You, you, you got to be bold enough to speak things that are non existent as though they already are. Yeah. So true. Yeah. 
Here David is, Goliath out there make, making, making a whole lot of noise. Yes. <laughs> but if, uh, I'm going to finish in a few minutes because I don't want to keep you all too long, okay? <laughs> First Samuel 17, 45 says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spirit and with a spear and with a shield, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of armies, of, uh, when you have defiled, verse 46, and one of these days, in a week by and by, what did he say? You got to be bold. This day, the Lord going to deliver my house into my hands. He's going to deliver that car into my hands. He's going to deliver my, so, my, my children saved back in my hands again. This day, will the Lord deliver you in my hands, he will smite, and I will smite you. I'm going to take your head off of you. This is a 16-year-old boy talking like this. I'm going to give your carcasses to the, to the host of the Philistines. When? This day. This day. you got to accept this this day. This is the day right now for your restoration. Now, this time, the giant is still there. He's still as big as ever. But he's talking bold, ain't he? you got to be bold and start saying, this day I receive my restoration. This day my car is restored. My house is restored. My marriage is restored. You got to start saying this day. Because as long as you keep putting out to the future, you're hoping that God will, but afraid that he won't. But you got to start declaring, no, this day my restoration happens to me right now. I was even, you know, you know this is kind of a little carnal what I'm talking about. This is a little carnal. But, you know, because I, I, we, we, we come back and forth here sometimes. Sometimes my wife and I, we back and forth, sometimes two times, sometimes three times a week, a month. You know, and, uh, and so I had this one truck. I said, God, you know, but, you know, I need another, I need a car because you know, I, I don't like just driving a truck all the time. And God put it in my heart. He said, you know, you can have a car, you know, because, you, know, you know, I used to have my Rolls, but, but I didn't want to be driving my Rolls Royce back and forth here. I'm, I'm talking to y'all at a higher level now. Don't, don't, don't hate participate. I'm trying to take you to another point of who you are. And so God told me, he said, he said, look in the, he said, look in the, in, in the, in the in one, this one website. And I saw this one car was a Mercedes. But this Mercedes was not like other Mercedeses. Mercedeses. Is that a word, Mercedes? I'm from the country, y'all. I'm from Coolidge, Arizona. So I said, I'm still, I'm still country a little bit there. It's all right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So anyway, Holy Spirit says, okay, look there. And I've seen this Mercedes Benz there. And this Mercedes was, this particular one was built in the year that they did not build a Maybach. But they had to build a particular Mercedes that was equal. And it was a 2015 S600 with TVs in it. The, 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 the seats go back and the back, seat, the back seats wear back. And God said, you want that one? I said, yeah. I, so it was in... So it was in a, uh, what's that town called? In Newport. Newport Beach. So we live, we drove to New Page. I got on the phone. I made the deal on the phone. Because I don't like people putting me in them little rooms no. yeah. waiting on them to decide what they're going to want. Yeah. I'm not walking into Dominion. Yeah. Subduing things. Yeah. So I got there. It was good. And so left out there with, with a Mercedes Benz. Because, you know, because I needed something to drive back and forth to Phoenix in. And when Jesus, he rode the donkey, it was the best transportation that was there. It was a brand new donkey. So I'm going to travel like, uh, hey, uh, I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. How about you? How about you? Hallelujah. See, so, but you, you got to know who you are. You, you got to know, you, the, 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 he said, I'm, ble I'm making you my image. Yes. I bless you. Yes. I want you to be fruitful. Yes. I want you to multiply. Yes. I want you to replenish this earth. Yes. And then I want you to subdue it and then take dominion over this thing. Yes. The time is coming. And now is that the church, not church full, but the church of Jesus Christ, is right. And not the tail. Anyway, I said, I Jesus, man. 
God. Be like T.D. Jack. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It has arrived. I said it has arrived. So when God put me, he said, I'm going to teach you about uh, as an apostle. I had to learn these things as an apostle away from here because I knew Phoenix real well. I'm known in Phoenix. But God put me in Las Vegas. Nobody didn't know Dr. Craig from a uh, brand new ice cream. Who, who is that? Is that a brand new ice cream, a different flavor or what? Nobody knew me there. But God did. The only person you need to know you is God. He helped me in those areas. How much more time I got, Rick? I need to close. Am I already over time? I'm already, probably already over time. I need to shut down, y'all. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to shut down. I just finished the last scripture so we can shut down. Hallelujah. There's only I even put it on there, but I know it's in... Uh, I know it's, uh, it's, I don't know if I'll get it or not, but if not, it's in uh, first Corinthians, Second Corinthians 9, verse 8. God is able yes. to make all grace yes. abound toward you. Yes. The Amplified Bible says that God is able to make every grace, favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. That you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. That's what I declare on you today in Jesus' name. That's what I declare on this ministry. I declare on every person in here right now. I declare it on your businesses. I declare it on your personal life. I declare it on your family right now. That full restoration is made for you right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. And I decree the blessing of God is on your life. I declare from this day forward that you're going to be fruitful and the creative power of Almighty God is going to operate and function in you like never before. That the entrepreneurial anointing, whether you're in ministry or in business, that to create, to create uh, new things in the earth uh, that God wants to see happen in this earth. I decree that anointing and that favor is on your life right now in the name of Jesus. And it is not going to be by might. Not by power, by the Spirit of God. So don't let nobody make you feel because of your lack of education is going to hold you back because God is saying, I am your rewarder. And I am a reward them that diligently seek me. So begin to move out in that favor. Move out in that anointing. Move out in that blessing. For the Lord is saying, restoration has arrived. It is here right now. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. la la maha baha. Begin to praise God for what you are right now. Begin to give him glory for what you are right now. Because the spirit of praise and the spirit of honor is coming on you right now. Such as you've never seen or, or heard of before. For the Holy Spirit himself will guide you and will lead you from this day forward into that full restitu restitution. Not only those things will be restored back, but I'm going to give you good measure, press down, shake it together. I'm going to speak to people on your behalf to be good to you and to show you favor. Mm. Hallelujah. Dora maha sotore, mandale kishon dora maha rege son doleriha, mandore le baha tati koba. These things does not happen in the natural realm. So don't look at the natural realm of the news media and allow them to govern what you, the decisions you make. For I, the Lord thy God, are going to do a new thing in the earth. And it'll only be, it'll only be discerned in the spirit realm to those who are tuned to hear my voice. So keep your ears open. And your voice clear when you speak that to what I say. Because you're going to begin to start seeing things that I put in your spirit. And things that you speak out of your mouth are going to come forth suddenly in the name of Jesus Christ. So go forth, my son. Go forth, my daughter, in this anointing. And watch your life change. And watch you change the lives of others. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mandaraki Sondora. Andore. Ora ma sotto un dia. Hallelujah. He's turning our morning into dancing and joy. Haroko shandeli. Elo mara. Thank you, Jesus. Worship you, Lord God of heaven. Worship you, Lord God of heaven. Worship you, Lord God of heaven. He is the Lord God of heaven. Hallelujah. Manzore lo rakishata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. I, I never forget what, what one word can do for your life. Back years ago, when uh, I, was, I, was, I was looking for the next thing that God would do in my life, I was at a camp meeting with Kenneth Hagin, and Kenneth Hagin began to prophesy. And he began to, this in the afternoon, so he said, he says, look, he says, he says, he kept using, he said, change, change, change. He says, for some of you that are here, he says that it's just one change you need to make. He said, but when you make that one small change, he said, you're missing, you're going to leap forward. Amen. At that time, I had been suffering so bad and going through so many changes in ministry and family. But I made that one change. But for me, it was when I went to ministry school. And just like he said, when I made that one change, the Holy Spirit spoke in my heart. The whole ministry around the world leaped forward. And I'm saying, that whatever God has put in your heart, when you obey God, don't look at anything else. Just obey God. Your life is going to leap forward. Yes. Going to leap forward. Yes. And what you thought going to take five years, God, be, it begins today. Amen. It begins today. Amen. Receive that in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back in the hands of Bishop Rick. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Restoration is in the house. It's in the house. Anybody receive that word today? Amen, amen. Can we declare that the rest of your life will be the best of your life? Yeah. Thank you, Apostle Craig. If you'd bow your heads with me for just one moment, we never know who's a part of the service, whether you're in person here or whether you're there on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom. And maybe you need to begin the process of living life for the kingdom. We're talking about giving your life to Christ. We're talking about you coming out of darkness into God's marvelous light. It's very simple to do. All you've got to do is ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and be Lord of your life, and he'll do just that. So if you're there on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, or if you're here in person and you say, that's me, I need to, I need to give my life to Christ today. There's a simple prayer that we're going to pray together. And if you're praying it for the first time, just know that today is your day that you'll come out of darkness and you'll come into God's marvelous light. If you're here in person, you say, I need to pray that prayer. I need to get saved. Would you raise your hand? I just want to see who's praying that prayer with us today. You may be there, as I mentioned, on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, but we're going to pray this together. So let's pray this. Say, Lord Jesus, today I acknowledge who you are. You are the Son of God. You were virgin born. You died on the cross. You rose from the dead just for me. So I ask you, Jesus,
to come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. I believe because I have asked. You have come in. Jesus, you are now my Lord and my personal Savior. I am now a child of God. I will live the rest of my life to bring glory to your name. Now, Jesus, I ask you, fill me with your Holy Ghost so that I might be empowered to live life victoriously and to be the witness that you've created me to be. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Come on, put your hands together for those that gave their lives to Christ today. Hallelujah. If you gave your life to Christ and you're there on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, would you put that in the chat? Just put God saved, gave my life to Christ so we can reach out to you. We want to make sure that you know what to do now that you are a child of God. We want to know, let you know that you can now be the best version of yourself you can possibly be and live the life that God has ordained for you to live. So just know we appreciate you and I do encourage you, those of you that gave your life to Christ, get into a good Bible believing, Bible teaching church where you can grow, develop, and mature in the things of God. While you're prayerfully considering a church, here's my shameless plug. Consider the message. Amen. Come on over to the message, church. Allow us the opportunity to love on you, to help you in any way that we possibly can. And let's grow together. Let's use our gifts, talents, and abilities to take this kingdom work to the place that God has ordained for it to be. So again, thank you for being a part of the service today. And we speak God's blessing over your life. Again, were we blessed by the word of God today? Man, the word technician was in the house. Yeah, I ain't, ain't called you that in a long time. Huh? The word technician was in the house. What an awesome word. Thank you so much for, for sharing that word with us. We receive it. Uh, restoration has begun. Amen. Uh, it's not coming. It's here right now. Now, when you go home, check your mail. You might want to check your voicemail when you leave it. Somebody might have called you in the process and say, hey, I was thinking about you. Uh, what's, what's your cash app? Oh, oh, you want mine? It's dollar sign, bitch. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. But you never know what God has spoken to the hearts of, in, of people in your life. And sometimes it's people that didn't need, you didn't even know. There's some people, Pastor Deborah and I, we can testify. Some people we never even knew that took us to levels that we never thought we would arrive at. I remember a simple ad that we put in the paper, or Pastor Deborah put in the paper. Um, six words. I think it was like looking for, what was it, looking for an investor or something like that. Someone to network with. Thank you. See, she, she'll straighten me out. Looking for someone to network with. And she put it in the newspaper here in Phoenix. We were in Coolidge. And a millionaire saw it called us and said, I want to meet with you. We sat down and met with him. He said, you're the ones. He said, I'll put up all the money for you to start a daycare center here in Phoenix. That starting of the daycare center is what led to the ministry coming to the shopping center that Azusa eventually bought the whole shopping center. Just one word from God will transform your life. And I believe we got our word. To, did anybody get their word today? <laughs> I got my word today. Yes, I did. Yeah, see, I ain't seen Pastor Daniel in I don't know how long. See, rest restoration. Good. To, I watch him all the time on Facebook. Flipping. <laughs> yeah, look at everybody that's seen Flipping houses. But it's good to see you, man of God. Good to have you in the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. But Apostle Alfred, Dr. Beverly Craig, uh, words cannot express our, our gratitude uh, for you coming today and sharing. Um, words cannot express uh, our love for you. Amen. I am so happy that God has uh, restored our relationship. And I, I know that the best, the best is yet to come. So not, not only for us, but for you as well. So, so I, I thank God for you today. You know, you know, the Bible's clear. I think it's in Corinthians, and it talks about when... You've been, anybody was sown into spiritually today? Anybody? Raise your hand if you were sown into spiritually. Well, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says when you have been sown into spiritually, it says it's only right 
That's only right that you would sow carnally. Your carnal things, your material things. It's talking about your money. And while I was sitting over there, I, I just heard the Spirit of God say, give the opportunity for anyone that really received their resurrection. I say resurrection, restoration too. Huh? Uh, restoration today to sow into that restoration anointing. So, so I'm not going to tell you what to give, but the, the number he gave me, I, got my, I just happen to have mine in my pocket. So that's, that's the number he gave me. He said, a uh, hundred dollars. So, so, oh, that's, that's not, that's not it. That's a five. That's that, 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 ain't, that ain't the one. That ain't the one. That ain't the one. There it is. There it is right there. He said, he said, give them the opportunity to sow a uh, hundred dollar. Now you may sow a thousand dollar restoration seed. I, I don't know what yours would be. It might be a multiple of a hundred, but he told me to give a hundred dollar uh, restoration seed and to make that available to anyone and everyone that really received the word today on resurrection. On, I keep saying resurrection. Uh, re the resurrection power of Jesus is what restores us, right? On restoration. So, so if that's you and you want to do it online, you can do it on Cash App. Uh, on the online, you can give there. If you're in person, you can give as well. I, I just want to give the opportunity. No, no twisting of the arms, no nothing like that, but just the opportunity for you to sow into what you have received here today. Amen. Now, as a as a ministry, we we are we're gonna be a blessing already. So, I mean, we we got that already lined up. So, so we're good there. But we want to give you the opportunity. To, to experience something fresh and new. So if you need an envelope, raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to provide you with one uh, because we just want to give you the opportunity. That's all. Um, you know, so I don't want you to leave and say, I wanted to. Oh, you won't be able to say that. Uh, amen. We're giving you the opportunity to sow, and we believe God for a return on your giving. Apostle Craig just told us, right? He said that if you want to, you, you got to measure it out. And as you measure it out, it's going to be measured back to you again. So, uh, so you know, you know how you want it to come back, and that's the way you give it out in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, um, Pastor Deborah. You coming up? Come on, come on, come on. While while they writing, while Tanika's writing out her her million dollar check, you know, come on, give her the opportunity. Come on, come on, because I know our time is yes, ma'am. Dollar sign apostle I am. Amen. Amen. All right. For those that that, that want call us, you got a basket. All right. There, there's there's mine. Amen. Anyone that wants to come up and sow physically, you definitely can. Um this is your opportunity to do so. Yeah, you can do Cash App as well. We'll make sure that it gets. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'm sorry. Which one? His or ours? Doesn't matter. You can give it to the church. We'll make sure it gets there. Um, the Cash App for the church is dollar sign the message church. If you want to give directly to Apostle Craig, um, then it will be dollar sign Apostle. I, I, and I am or dollar sign apostle I am that's the simplest one yeah okay good 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 we want to give you the opportunity to sow release your faith and watch God do some great things in your life amen praise the Lord Amen. What we saw earlier, uh, where we celebrated uh, the message partner of the of the week, right? Uh, we just want to thank God for Ada Ware McLemore. Amen. She joins us uh, every morning, or she joins me every morning on my, uh, we should be walk and talk, but Deborah told me it was too dark for me to be outside because um, I'm too dark. Amen. I don't know why she got that, but amen. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> so, so we do a sit and talk every morning, and she joins me every morning, and we just want to say congratulations to her. She's such a faithful uh, uh, partner. She supports the ministry on a weekly basis, and we just want to say thank you for that. Amen. Also, don't forget about uh, the, some upcoming things that are going on. We want to make sure that you participate. This coming Saturday, I'm asking all the men in the house to travel with me uh, down to Coolidge, Arizona, where we will be go and we'll join their bishops, Vince Smith and Lady Tammy. Uh, they're having a men's empowerment. That I've been asked to be the guest speaker. I'm expecting some great things. So uh, the men of the message, we want you to travel down. The men that are watching us on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, you can come on down as well if you live in the Pinell County county area or anywhere close to it come on and watch God do some great things in your life amen yeah if you're going to be traveling from here in Phoenix meet me here at the church at 7 15 because it begins at nine o'clock down there and we don't want to be late we want to be on time amen anything else every uh every week we uh we give we like giving. We're a giving church. Amen. So we, we give out uh, message moment gifts uh, online, Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom. And then we also do in person as well. So our Facebook social media virtual message moment winner today is Mary Neal. Congratulations, Mary Neal. Amen. Our YouTube winner today is Evangelist Faye Butler. Congratulations, Evangelist Faye. And our Zoom winner today is Stephen Owens. Congratulations, Stephen Owens. So, uh, you know, give me your cash app and you know you'll get something apt to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a slow cooker. A slow cooker. All right. Let's see who's okay. All right. The in person winner of the slow cooker is number 102. Number 102. 102. Mr. Scott. All right. Congratulations. What'd you say, Mr. Scott? Okay, let's stop. Let's stop. Well, 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 he wants to give it to somebody. So you decide who you're going to give it to. Give it to Mr. Scott, and he'll decide who he's going to give it to. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, take out your cell phones real fast, real fast. You say, why am I taking out my cell phone? Because you had it out all service anyway. Take it out real quick, and then this is what we're going to do. <laughs> It's, it's called it's called text in church. This is how we know who was present, who was absent, so we know who to follow up on this week. So if you are a member of the message, you're going to actually text check in two because this is week two to the number 602-845-8655. That's 602-845-8655. You're going to type in check in two. If you are a regular visitor of the message, you're going to type in reg viz two. That's R E G V I. Is two. If you are a first time visitor, means you've never been to the message before, you're going to type in welcome. If this is all this is the first time and last time that you'll be a visitor from now on, you are family. You come and join us and be a part of what God is doing right here. Are there any first time visitors here in the house with us today that never been to the message before? Just want to see who you are. Just wave at me if there are any. Uh, all right. I see one. Two. All right. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. Put your hands together and bless God for our visitors today. So you'll be the ones that will type in welcome. And if you're there on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, you know wherever you fit in, get in, uh, go ahead and put it in the screen or on your message. On the chat. There you go. And we will connect with you. Again, we love you and appreciate you. Again, Apostle, Apostle Alfred and Dr. Beverly Craig, words cannot express our thanks and appreciation for you coming and being a part of the service today. Um, as you saw, the, the, the people of God, I believe, were refreshed uh, by the word that, was, that took place, have been impacted and imparted into, and uh, we're expecting now for things to to leap forward. That was the word, right? To leap forward and, uh, in our lives, in the ministry, and in everything that we do. So we love you and we appreciate you. Pastor Deborah. is there anything you want to say? That's it. That's it? All right. All right. Let's stand to our feet. Let's do that. Again, thank you all for being with us today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll let Apostle Alfred and Dr. Beverly Craig, they'll go out and that way they can, they can greet you as you uh, depart today. Because I'm, I'm sure you want to shake their hand, hug their neck, do something. Amen. Let them know how much you appreciate them today. 
Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity that you've given us. Thank you, Father, for the word that was spoken and for the lives that have now been changed. Now, Father, as we leave this place, yet never leave your presence. We thank you for traveling grace being bestowed upon every person. We declare that this week will be the best week they've ever had in their lives. God, open up doors for them. Bring them into the company of people that they need to know that is crucial for their success. We honor you and we praise you for doing it now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen and amen. You are dismissed. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a prosperous week.